And now on BBC One, Alan Titchmarsh meets Anthony Hopkins, Deborah Winger and Richard Attenborough in this week's edition of Songs of Praise. Here in London's Leicester Square, there's a royal premiere of a film which tells the true story of one of this country's most remarkable Christian communicators. Shadowlands is directed by Richard Attenborough and has already been nominated for two Oscars and five BAFTA awards. It's a story that speaks of love and pain, faith and hope. The Prince of Wales is about to arrive to see the film and we've a sneak preview for you on tonight's Songs of Praise. C.S. Lewis was an intellectual, an Oxford don, but he was able to express his thoughts and ideas about Christianity in ways which millions are able to enjoy and understand. Children of all ages are still enthralled by one of his best known works, The Chronicles of Narnia, stories of lions, magicians, witches and wardrobes. Tonight we've come to Holy Trinity Church, Headington Quarry in Oxford. For many years, this was where C.S. Lewis worshipped, it even has a Narnia window. Inside, the parishioners of today, students from Oxford University, and people who knew Lewis personally. Shadowlands is a drama based on a true story. Anthony Hopkins plays C.S. Lewis and Deborah Winger, the American Joy Gresham, whom he marries and falls in love with, in that order. His real name was Clive. He hated it. He was known as Jack and he lived in this house with his brother Warney, a couple of confirmed bachelors. 
the relationship with Joy Gresham began as a correspondence. I had a strange dream last night. Another letter from Mrs. Gresham. I can't remember any of it. Jewish communist, Christian American. Mm -hmm. You may ask me. I know it was strange if I'd forgotten it. Can't answer that one. I like her letters. She can be quite sharp sometimes. Listen to this morning. She says, I can't decide whether you'd rather be the child caught in the spell or the magician casting it. See, her letters are rather unusual. She writes as if she knows me somehow. I don't play him in a biographical sense. This really, this film, Bill Nicholson's film, is a sort of fictional illumination based on the fact of one episode in his life, his love for Joy Gresham. Their relationship began primarily as a friendship and uh, they shared sort of a dialogue on Christianity before she ever arrived in England for that first visit. Anybody here called Lewis? Eventually, the two married, but purely as an act of friendship to help Joy overcome immigration problems. It was some time later, when Joy was found to have terminal cancer, that Jack realised he'd fallen in love. When they met and fell in love, uh, they had their friendship first and then fell in love, I think that for her it was sort of a proof of things, whereas for Jack it was more of a shock. So that by the time she died, she was, had found a certain peace. It was almost as if Joy knew that maybe her life wouldn't be very long. The feeling that, that, that Joy's love being in some degree um, related to the love of Christ in that uh, there was something pure, something wonderful, something serene about it. Uh, I don't know whether it would have been the same without his faith. Faith? And, and I don't mean faith in, in Christianity necessarily, but the idea of faith is ever so important. To have faith, whether it's beginning in oneself and then trying to expand to other things that we, that, you know, we can't really conceive of. But faith is very important. And I think the film, yes, I think the film has faith. One of the themes in the film is that he says he challenges his audiences those lectures. He says, does God want us to be happy? He says, I don't know. I doubt it very much. He wants to make us perfect through pain. Now, that's a pretty hard premise. But he has finally challenged himself because his wife, Joy Gresham, dies from cancer. A very painful death. And it shakes his faith. As a strong advocate of Christianity, C.S. Lewis had written and talked about faith, pain and suffering which he was to experience personally and vividly. This is the Bodleian Library at the heart of Oxford University, where theological minds have grappled with such problems for centuries. And here, in Convocation House, Schola Cantorum, a student choir, sing our next hymn. <laughs>
grief is just a terrible, terrible loss. It's just sheer and utter devastation. Whereas before, you know, with your partner, you were a whole person. You now have jagged edges and you have to try and knit those together again. Marion Crowther knows what it's like to lose a partner. Her husband, Doug, died from cancer when he was 45. Doug was ill for two years. Um, when he was fit, he was a big, big man, six foot two, weighing almost 16 stone. And he became unwell, and from then he declined and died on January the 20th, 1987. Coincidentally, the same day as Terry Waite was kidnapped. A couple of weeks ago, she went to see a preview of Shadowlands. I thought it was a very honest film. I think it portrayed the loss of somebody you love very, very well. I could tell how Lewis was very angry, very cross when his wife was ill and when she died, and yes, I, I can equate with that. Lewis struggled with his faith through his bereavement. How did it affect you? I was very angry with God, because nobody can give you a good reason why bad things happen to you. And I'm still struggling with my faith. I'm still trying to get back to where I was before. I was very angry, and I kept saying, why, why, why? That's the word that I use more than any other, sort of wondering why it happened. And at the end of the day, nobody can give you that answer. Marion found help in her grief through Cruz, the Organisation for Bereaved People. Now she helps them as a voluntary counsellor. I turned up at Cruz one evening in a really, really desperate state. And somebody came up to me and offered their help. And that really was the beginning of my recovery. And I should always be indebted to that person. I found it very rewarding. And maybe that's one thing that's a good thing that's come out of losing Doug, that, that I now have the ability to maybe help other people. Grief is a price you have to pay when you love somebody. Yes, love is worth it. See why she had to get sick? No, no, me. But, uh, you can't hold on to things, Douglas. You have to let them go. Shadowlands is a moving love story. Not only do we see a man facing the loss of his wife, but a teenage boy who loses his mother. Jack? Mm hmm? Do you believe in heaven? Yes, I do. I don't believe in heaven. Yes, I do believe in heaven today, but of course I always did. In fact, the, the, answer is, the question is answered the way it is in the film, for dramatic necessity. 
despite the fact that I always really believed in heaven. Well, Douglas Gresham is no longer a teenager, and he's with me here now in Studley Priory, having afternoon tea, which is where C.S. Lewis used to sit. Is that right? Absolutely right, yeah. My mother and Jack used to come out here, sometimes with friends, sometimes by themselves, and have afternoon tea, just as we are, and sit in this very window, in fact. Now, what influence did C.S. Lewis have on your faith? I think my faith today is far stronger because of the, the educative influence of Jack in my life. But he never preached to me. He never tried to make me a Christian. He never crammed anything down my throat. It's a tragic story in many ways. Do you think that's the feeling it leaves you with, of tragedy? No, definitely not. In fact, I don't even think that it's a tragic story, even though I lived through it myself and suffered a great deal of pain uh, as a result of what happened. The issue really is that when you go into the depths of despair and, and the dark trench of grief, of bereavement, and you are frantically searching for something to, to help you, and it's not until you finally get to the point where you say, look, there is nothing to hang on to. I can't handle this. God says, I know, but I can. And that's when you find Jesus waiting for you. But you almost have to give up searching for your own earthly remedies for grief, because there aren't any. And that's what happens at the end of Shadowlands. Jack comes up out of the trench of grief and starts to live life again. And that's the beauty of it. That's why people leaving the cinema, having seen Shadowlands, will feel elated rather than despairing. We're singing tonight in, in the church where C.S. Lewis worshipped. You're even sitting in his pew. Was he a good singer? Well, actually, in, in a sense, yes, and in a sense, no. Jack could sing, um, but he wasn't... He had such a booming, powerful voice that he wouldn't sing in a church in that way. I mean, of course, I dare say tonight, because we're doing songs of praise, the church will be much more full than it was in Jack's day. And had Jack really let rip full voicing a song, he would have deafened everybody. Um, he, he could sing, but he didn't sing out loud in church. In one of his books, C.S. Lewis describes the journey to heaven as a bus ride. He was on a bus himself when he had a profound religious experience and sensed the presence of God. It changed his life. This is Magdalen College where he taught for 29 years. We'll be hearing from the chapel choir there in a minute. But first, back in our Songs of Praise church at Headington Quarry is the man who made the new film. The Shadowland's story is one of the understanding of love. When C.S. Lewis and his beloved wife became separated by death, he kept notebooks. 
mapping out the thoughts and feelings he experienced in his grief. And they were written initially, but not for publication, merely as a sort of safety valve for himself. Throughout, he referred to Joy, his wife, as H. And I would like now, if I may, to read just a few words from those jottings, which he calls Grief Observed. Praise is the mode of love which always has some element of joy in it. Praise in due order of him as the giver and of her as the gift. Don't we in praise somehow enjoy what we praise, however far we are from it? I see I've described H as being a sword. Well, that's true as far as it goes, but utterly inadequate by itself and misleading. I ought to have balanced it. I ought to have said, but also like a garden, like a nest of gardens, wall within walls, hedge within hedge, more secret, more full of fragrant and fertile life the further you enter. And then of her and of every created thing I praise, I should say in some way, in its unique way, like him who made it. C.S. Lewis died in 1963, on the same day that President Kennedy was assassinated. But his stories are perhaps more popular today than they've ever been, especially the children's books. And the local school here has a special visitor today. Now, children, we have a very special guest in school, and this is Mr. Douglas Gresham, who is C.S. Lewis's stepson. Hi. How are you today, anyway? Well, C.S. Lewis's stepson, you know, that's a bit of a title, but what it really means is that I know quite a lot about Narnia. So if there's anything you'd like to know about Narnia, um, feel free to ask, you know. What would you like to know? Anybody got any questions about Narnia that you'd like to ask? Yes? How far was C.S. Lewis into the books when your mum married him? Well, when I first met him, I think he hadn't written... The Last Battle, but most of them were finished, I think they were all finished before they were married. 
Hello. Hello. Sorry about that, oh, We really appreciate this, Mr. Lewis. You've no idea how Douglas was looking forward to today. Say, Douglas. Ask him. I told him you were writing his Narnia book. Do you mind? No, of course not. Yes. Um, yes. To Douglas, yes? Douglas, yes. You notice that inside the horse and his boy, on the page, it says to David and Douglas Gresham. Well, I'm the Douglas Gresham. More questions? Anybody? Yes, sir. You're in the front. Um, what was your favourite character in the books? Hmm. I think Reaper Cheap, perhaps. Because he's cheeky like I was when I was a kid. <laughs> of course, apart from Aslan. Aslan is everybody's favourite character because, you know, he's, he's so special. You are, all of you are, as you used to call it in the Shadowlands, dead. But for them, it was only the beginning of the real story. All their life in this world and all their adventures in Narnia had only been the cover and the title page. Now, at last, they were beginning chapter one of the great story which no one on earth has read, which goes on forever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. Now at last, they were beginning chapter one of the great story which no one on earth has read, which goes on forever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm on your face. The rain fall softly on your fields. And until we meet again, May God bless you and hold you in the palm of his hand.
Next week is Mothering Sunday, so I hope you make her a cup of tea. Pam Rhodes will be finding out the history and traditions of this special day, which this year takes on extra significance. It's the International Year of the Family. She'll be in Manchester Cathedral at the cast of thousands. <laughs>